Oh, greetings. I'm the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com. Sorry for not uploading a new video for a while. To be honest, I've not been feeling well lately, though I'm on the path to recovery. In any case, to make up for things, I thought I would do a video on a popularly assigned college textbook dealing with discrete mathematics. And this is very relevant because many of the last videos I've uploaded on logic problems are inspired by discrete mathematics, are inspired by a textbook like this, the Rosen textbook, Discrete Mathematics and Its Applications. If you want to, for example, become a software engineer, you will have to take at least one discrete math course, and you might be assigned this textbook or a similar one. I don't want to focus so much on giving a general overview of the textbook. I really want to focus in on chapter one, which is relevant for us on logic. So chapter one is logic and proofs, and it's really just giving an elementary sketch of propositional logic and predicate logic. It's not going in depth, um, but it's giving you a general overview then the textbook gets into set theory, algorithms, number theory, and cryptography, induction, combinatorics, namely how many permutations or combinations, how many ways can you arrange something, and so forth, discrete probability, relations, graphs, trees, Boolean algebra, and more. So let's turn to chapter one and just preview this. So chapter one is the foundations, logic, and proofs. The textbook says the rules of logic specify the meaning of mathematical statements. For instance, these rules help us understand and reason with statements such as there exists an integer that is not the sum of two squares. And for every positive integer n, the sum of the positive integers not exceeding n is n times the quantity n plus 1 divided by 2. Logic is the basis of all mathematical reasoning and all of automated reasoning. So you can see why a software engineer definitely needs to learn some logic. So section 1.1 is on propositional logic. We have an introduction. We get into what exactly is a proposition. So declare something to be the case. There's a little sidebar on Aristotle, the first true logician. Talks about atomic propositions and it introduces us to the negation of a proposition. How can we negate a given proposition? And how can we symbolize it, too? And then, as you might suspect, we can think about truth tables, of course. We can think about the conjunction of two propositions, the disjunction of two propositions. And there are many applications in this book, many problems. We have conditional statements, which I think are most confusing of the various uh, connectives. We have our truth table, and there are different ways to express a conditional. For example, if P then Q, or P implies Q, P only if Q, a sufficient condition for Q is P, and so on and so forth. So we can take an English sentence sometimes and translate it into mathematical logic. We can think about the converse, contrapositive, and inverse of a conditional proposition, and we have done videos on that on this YouTube channel. And I also have some resources at amateurlogician.com, which um, goes through them as well. Truth tables of compound propositions, also known as molecular propositions. And we have logic and bit operations. Logic is very important in computer science. And some people specialize in the logic as it applies to the computer sciences. There are many exercises. Just for that section alone, for example, we have 54 problems. There's quite a bit of uh, material to work on and practice with, and you'll find answers in the back of the book, at least for the odd problems. And section 1.2 is applications of propositional logic, so translating English sentences into this specific, specifying, exacting language, so to speak. Boolean searches and logic puzzles. the page, and logic circuits, which is another thing I want to cover on this YouTube channel very soon. And it's a pretty cool application of propositional logic that we can think about logic circuits and we can mathematically model them with the help of propositional logic. So there are many uses of propositional logic outside of, say, philosophy or, or whatnot. Um, we can just also apply to some types of engineering problems. And then, of course, we have a, a set of problems, quite extensive. 
So there are 47 problems there. And then we get into propositional equivalencies with section 1.3. We can think about De Morgan's laws. We have all sorts of logical equivalencies. So recently on this YouTube channel, we've talked, for example, about the absorption laws, the negation laws. Um, we've talked about the domination laws, identity laws, and, and so forth. And there are different ways to think about conditionals. We can think about various equivalencies. So, for example, if P, then Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. So sometimes that's called an implication. So using D. Morgan's laws, constructing new logical equivalencies. And there's a lot more here. Um, we can think about puzzles and apply logic to various types of puzzles. And, of course, we have a set of exercises. So that section alone has 72 problems. Then section 1.4 is on predicates and quantifiers. So here we're moving into predicate logic, where we can say for all, we can say there exists A. Quantifiers over finite domains. Logical equivalencies involving quantifiers. We can think of D. Morgan's laws for quantifiers. That's one way we can at least think about this in terms of um, this statement and this statement being equivalent. We have logic programming. Section 1.5 is on nested quantifiers. So we can have multiple quantifiers. So for example, here we have for all x, for all y, such and such. x plus y is equal to y plus x. The order of quantifiers, translating mathematical statements into statements involving nested quantifiers, which can be tricky at first. And again, an extensive set of problems. There are 52 problems there. Section 1.6 is on rules of inference. So we can think about arguments in propositional logic and predicate logic. We have things like modus ponens, um, also known as the law of detachment, which is not uh, my preferred way. It's not my preferred terminology. Um, but in any case. And here we have our rules of inference, modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, addition, Simplification, conjunction, resolution. Using rules of inference to build arguments. You get into fallacies. Combining rules of inference for propositions and quantified statements. And then we get into proofs. And here we're thinking about mathematical proofs. Um, so, for example, direct proofs, um, proof by contraposition. A lot of these examples use um, elementary number theory, proof by contradiction. We can think about um, errors in proofs. And I think that's it. Oh, one more section here. Proof, method, and strategy. Exhaustive proof and proof by cases. We can think about existence proofs, uniqueness proofs. Looking for counterexamples, proof strategy in action. And we have some cool puzzle applications. All right. So that is chapter one. And then chapter two gets into set theory. But in any case, uh, this is just an introduction to the first chapter of Rosin's textbook, Discrete Mathematics and His Applications. Um, I'm going to be uploading many more videos dealing with logic problems that are relevant to discrete mathematics. We're going to continue our series on first course in mathematical logic, and also we'll do a lot more stuff on traditional verbal style logic as well, and maybe some other topics um, as we go along. In any case, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this type of material, please check out my website, amateurlogician.com. You can subscribe to my newsletter there. If you like this type of content and want to support me, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. I would very much appreciate it. 
You can also purchase this textbook if you so desire. There's a link below, and that will get you to Amazon. Thanks for watching, and be well.